Welcome back to the channel. Now in the last video I did on the Ranchero here sitting behind us, I had a comment from someone uh, in, in the video I'd actually stated that this is a 351 Cleveland engine, meaning it's a 5.7 litre. I was corrected in the last video, uh, it's not actually a 5.7 litre, it's a 5.8 litre. And of course that 0.1 of a litre makes all the difference because the bigger the better. So it's not actually a 5.7, it's a 5.8. Anyway, previously on the last video, this is where we left it. When you rev the engine, I'm going to do it now. Yep, there it is. So there's a small fuel leak coming from the pump diaphragm on the carburetor, which is this bit here. So we're not going anywhere in this for the moment. So in today's video, we're going to be taking this off and seeing if that's what's causing the leak and see if we can get that replaced and prevent the leak. So I can take the ranchero out and start enjoying it again. Ignore the old t-shirt by the way, that's just stopping any crap from uh, falling down the carburetor if there's anything floating around. So we'll get it set up and we'll get this bit off and see what we'll find inside. Now the way this carburetor works, you put your foot on the accelerator and push down, it pulls that towards the back of the car, which in turn activates this rod and pushes that in on there to squirt petrol in the carburetor. So in order to get everything taken apart, I've disconnected this rod, it just clips in to that there. So I've just disconnected the rod, we'll get that pulled forward out of the way. And then once we've done that, there we are. Now we can take that apart and see if we can get that out. Now I've moved the t-shirt and put it underneath because I don't know what's in here. There could be springs or ball bearings inside here. I've got three of the bolts out, just going to take the last one out by hand here, it's all loosened off. And these are quarter inch bolts so we'll just get that out of there that's safely to one side and then, oh yeah there's definitely a spring in there so we'll just take that out grab the spring there you are right let's go and find somewhere to put this so we can have a better look at it now I've put the spring safely to one side. As you can see, this is a just a plunger with a gasket. Now, I'm assuming that the gasket is all pretty much worn out now just due to the age of it. So we're just easing that gasket off of there. That brings the plunger out with it. So that now is just a part of the carburetor. We can forget about that for the moment. Now it's probably this gasket here that's causing the problem. It's not actually split, but it is hardened. Now it's a little bit windy out here today, so hopefully you'll be able to hear us okay, but this is the original diaphragm pump that came out of the, uh, the front of the carburetor. Now, its actual job, when it's in there, when you jump on the accelerator, that bit pushes through there. So it'll, uh, I don't know if you can see that, it'll come through like that. It helps push the fuel through the carburetor. Now the problem with this one, I don't know if you'll be able to home in and, and see this much, but you see if it's, uh, if it's going to focus, all those little cracks, splits around there. Probably what's letting the fuel sneak out when you are using it. So uh, had a look through the box of, uh, of the parts I ordered for the rebuild kit, and we came up with this. Now this is the new one that comes in the box, you'll see a little bit marked there, but that's nothing. And it's all nice and soft, works really well. But you may have noticed that there's a bit missing. Well, that's not too much of a problem because you do get the bit that comes in the box, in the packaging as well. And that would sit on there. So the way that works on the plunger for the carburetor is you put that in first and then that goes on top and that's your plunger there and there's one slight problem with that, that when that goes in before it starts moving the plunger on the top you can see that this arm that's on my thumb isn't sitting exactly level it's kind of up on an angle before it makes contact and if I take that out And I put the old one in. Now on this one, when it starts making contact, you 
can see it's actually sitting level. Right, so if we put the two side by side, come down here, you can see there's an obvious difference in height. So, in order to get around that, I did this. And I found a bit of bar in the garage or the shed, cut it to size, the size I need it to be, cleaned it up a little bit. So what we're going to do with that is we're going to take the new one off of there. I'm going to stand that on there. And then if you look at it, they're both the same height. And it just so happens that this bar is a very similar diameter to the new rod that came with it. I balance them there on the on the sleeve on the gap. So you can see there's not much in it. And I'm not worried about the fuel leaking out because this doesn't sit in a seal. This doesn't sit in a seal anyway. That's the sealing part. So all we've got to do now is put them in the car, get it all connected up, see if it works. Right, so what we've got to do first of all is rebuild this, which when it's back together goes in there, bolts on the front of there. So this rod that came off, if you can see, but there's a little, that will focus, there's a little lip, little notch on the side of that. And in the side of this, there's a notch made for it as well. You can see that there. So that just goes into there and it locks in that way. So we'll slide that into there. That's that bit back together. The next thing I'm gonna do is put the bar that I, that I cut all the way down in there. And we'll put the diaphragm back in. Of course, we need the spring that came out yesterday as well. The spring sits in there like that as it goes on. And then all we've got to do is get this down on there. So the spring in there, that on there. We'll push that through. See if I can get one of the bolts in there to hold that all in place. Now we've got those four in, they just need tightening. I did them finger tight, but you don't need them to be really tight. It's just a case of snugging them up. And you definitely don't want to try and do it to FT. Because that will strip the threads. On that one. I'll just try and get in and a better angle. the hardest one will be the one way over here in the corner Let's just see if I can get in from the other side to get that put in there's always one that takes longer than the rest this which goes all the way back there onto that little stump there where my finger is if you can see that in there now it hooks through and there's a little clip that goes on all in place if so i can find it which is that you 
obviously it hooks into there so that goes on over the top with the clip around the back and then the arm goes through the hole clips into this and that holds it all in place this is going to be fun to put on isn't it Let's see if we can work this out well it's in and if you can see back there just there you can see where the arm comes through those shiny solar bits and the rusty bit in the middle and then it kind of falls down on top and clips and holds it in place now looking at it and i'll pull the accelerator i don't know if i'm keen on how that moves but we'll give it a try if it doesn't work we'll always take it apart again and put the little bar back in Well, as you can see, that seems to be working. So it seems to have cured the problem when you're accelerating. I'll switch the engine off and uh, we'll see what it does when you just operate it by hand, because that's when it was leaking out the last time now. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that works as well and we'll fix it. Right, it's a bit quieter under here now and a lot warmer. So the last time when I found it was leaking, every time I operated that, there'll be a little bit of petal would spit out from around about here. So let's see if we'll fix that, see if that stays dry. see by the smoke coming out it's definitely squirting so the squirters are working and there's nothing leaking out at the front absolutely perfect well there we are and guys that's another one fixed tick that one off the list and just in case you're wondering this was the kit that I got so it's um, walkerproducts.com and the part number if you need it is there 15369D now I was sent this part number as you can see made in the USA as always I was sent this, I was sent this part number from a guy in the Ford Ranchero Club on Facebook or the Ford Ranchero Group on Facebook all he did was just send us um, Walker and the part number and I punched that into the internet and to be honest I can't remember whether it was Fleabay or Scamerson that it came up on but it was about 15 quid uh, so well worth it and of course I've got all these extra bits in case I need them and anything else goes wrong with the cob now um, that's designed to fit one of these carburetors this is the old Ford two barrel cob it's an auto light unit that's uh, the number on the tag if you can see that if you can make that out I'm not sure what the actual serial number of the carb is i do know it's either a 2100 or a 2150 series so if um if your diaphragm assembly starts leaking on the front of your carb you know how to fix it now and that's it all back together with the air filter on perfect timing as well really because uh, there's a local car show on tomorrow well that's it for this one guys Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it and you got some form of information out of it or you just enjoyed watching me struggle to put things back together, stop the car right leaking, give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. If you've got any comments or any questions, leave them in the comments box below. And uh, I'll leave a link up here to all the rest of the stuff I've done with the Ranchero since I bought it. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.